So let's take an advanced look at our tech scope. And what we're going to address here is some of the applications for the various views, for the various monitors, and for some of the ways that you can customize the scope. Right. You know, there's this old saying that nobody needs a drill, what you need is a hole. Well, the same can be said for scopes. Nobody really needs a scope, but you need all that data that that, that scope information, provides. The information and the data that the scope provides, that's absolutely critical to doing good color correction. So let's take a look at how the scope provides that information. So in this advanced training for color, we want to talk about the tech scopes and some of the really cool features there are for more advanced colorists. And one of the things that, um, as Bob and I were checking out this monitor that we were really, really excited about that is a very cool thing, is the capture button. If you look right here, there's a simple button, one button push to do a capture. And you're like, well, what's a capture? Well, just like there's a lot of different things in the UI for uh, color where you can you know, there's a still store room and you can cut back and forth and you can grab a still. This is an even faster way in a way that is really, really intuitive to use to grab a still and save it, a reference still basically, and match against it in the interface for Tektronix. I'm going to show you how to do that. Right now, if you look at the color UI, we've got our reference still. It's a nice warm shot of uh, my fingers playing the piano. And as I think I've mentioned, you're, you're lucky you can't hear any audio on this. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to match this shot to a shot that was mis white balanced a little blue. So what we're going to do right now is very simple. While we're already parked, while the Tektronix is being fed by this warm image that we're going to use as a reference, I'm going to hit the capture button right here. Just one simple button. And if you look, the scopes kind of get blown out a little bit. You've got a golden yellow color and a whitish color that's kind of laid over it. To see what we want to do and how to color correct this image, let's advance forward in the timeline to our blue image. And if you look at Colors UI, we've got the same shot basically, only it's much bluer. Now check out the Tektronix display and you'll see that there's now a yellow and a white overlay that looks slightly different. What the deal is here is we've got the RGB parade waveform, the gold color is our reference, and the white color is our live feed. To show that it's a live feed, Bob, can you take the red gain there and just move it up and down? You can actually see in the, in the text display, uh, move it up, just kind of focus it back and forth for us, uh, that sure. red gain, to show that the display goes up and down. So that's too high, and you can see the shape of it is pretty much the same as our reference, and if you pull it down too low, you can see the only thing that's up at the top is just the gold reference image in the waveform. And Bob can balance this out. And let's just balance each one of these color levels. Obviously, we'd normally balance the blacks first, red, green, and blue, and then balance our gains, the red, green, and blue gain, and our red, blue, and green gamma, possibly, if we need it. And by watching the tech scopes and this overlay of your live image on top of your captured image, you can very easily and quickly do matching shots. And matching is really a big part of a colorist job, don't you think, Bob? Oh, definitely is. And you gotta you gotta do a little tweaking, a little bit over, a little bit back, come back and forth. Yep, it's that and it's that analogy of a focusing a camera. You wanna come, you don't just want to hit that point, you want to hit it and go a little bit beyond, come back, hit it again, come a little bit below, and then move it back up and hit the the point so that you know kind of where your levels are. And so that, that's what Bob's doing now. He's basically grading the image while looking at the tech scopes and this capture display. At the bottom of the display, while he's doing that, I just wanted to point out to you that you've got a delete image, which, which is clear. So if I wanted to just see my live image, all I have to do is hit the select button and I would clear that golden look and just leave a, a live feed coming into the, vec, uh, the tech scope. So, Steve, I think I'm getting pretty close here. What do you think? I cool. mean, just cut back and forth. I'll walk back and forth do? here. Yeah, wow, that's pretty good. And if you remember, there's a little you know, warmth in there. We did this pretty quickly, but that is really close. You, you think sometimes, man, I've got this Miss White Balance shot. There's not much I can do. Those are pretty close matches. And, and it wasn't that far off in the shadow. It was just a little bit of a different, like you said, a white balance tweak. Yep, absolutely. And so we were able to use this capture function. I want to show you a little bit more about this capture in case you have any uh, further questions about it. If you punch the capture button, you get um, this little display. You can hit select, 
and that will clear off your capture. So now you're just looking at your live image. If you hit capture again, you can choose um, whether you want to see the live plus the frozen, um, whether you want to look at the buffer, or whether you want to look at the freeze. And those are all kind of the buttons that are down at the bottom. The other thing that we were playing with a little bit, if you're having a hard time seeing your images in there, let me just show you this. I'm going to hold down the display button. This is a button I haven't shown you yet. We're going to hit the display button, and you're actually able to, using the cursor buttons at the top here, go up to waveform intensity, and once you're on waveform intensity, you're going to press the right arrow key to get to the percentages, and then the general dial up here will dial in the intensity of the live feed. So you can, you can choose how bright you want the white compared to the yellow. I just wanted to show that to you in case you felt like uh, that, that intensity or the brightness was a little too much for you. It's very easy to choose um, all kinds of parameters on here. And there are not a million displays. You have to go down, 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 down. Everything is pretty much a button click and an arrow away and you're there. So I'm going to just choose capture again and we're going to hit uh, select to clear our capture and we're back to our regular waveform vector. We talked a little bit about uh, in that other project that we were working on, that spider cube that we had, and that oh, was a yeah. pretty cool little job. We want to talk a little bit more about uh, matching shots and the waveform monitor is a great place to do that. So basically what we want to do here is call up that spider cube and then um, I'm going to show you how to use the line selector to kind of find that in, in the shot. And so here we've got um, the footage that we shot here in the studio of the little spider cube. Let's go to the close-up version in the timeline, and you can see the little spider cube in there. And if you look closely at the waveform, the RGB waveform uh, parade, you can kind of see where that spider cube lies, but it's not real evident in the waveform. And so one of the ways that we can find out exactly where that waveform is, is to use the line selector button. Once again, on the front of the display, it's a very simple uh, button push. If you don't have um, this specific display, you can also get the rasterizer. It has the same controls, basically. And also, the other cool thing about this tech scope is it's completely controllable from your computer. You get a little a little applet that resides on your computer and all of this stuff you can use your keyboard you can have access to all these buttons and all of the menus from a separate computer if that's what you want um, but I for me the display on the front the buttons on the front it's pretty easy to get to anything for example line select if I want to get to line select it's one button there's a button right here on the front I'm just going to choose line select so you're wondering geez well where is that well, you kind of look across here and you got to figure out where you are. It, this says that I'm at line uh, 281, I believe. And you use your the general dial up here at the top to move up and down in the image. I'm going to go up. I'm guessing, you know, out of a thousand lines that uh, someplace around 600 is going to be the top of this cube. I'm at 427 or something. All of a sudden, if you look across here, we're getting a very strong spike down into black. That could very well be the bottom, and, and also realize where it is. It's way over here to the side, and I'm guessing that that might be the bottom or the hole in that spider cube as I'm starting to go up. I'm going to continue up 400. The black is, is getting a little bit lighter, and my guess is there's a very dark hole that spider cube is designed so there's actually a cavity inside, so you get a real absolute black. And around that absolute black is, it's definitely black, but it's, it's reflective black. Right. And that's probably what we're seeing right there is the reflective black of that cube. And also if you look to the other side of it, you're also starting to see a white spike, and that might be the bottom of that, uh, the white part of that spider cube. So I'm just kind of dialing in this line select, and what we're what the waveform is literally showing you, if you're not used to looking at waveform, normally it looks much, you know, the, the trace looks much thicker, right? But what we're looking at here is a single line of video going across. So we're, we're able to kind of isolate um, before, you know, if we have the regular waveform up, you wouldn't be able to delineate in the waveform very easily between Bob's hand, which is kind of mid-tones, and his arm, and the and the the spider cube because it, they're all in the same horizontal space, so it would be much harder to do. But this way we can kind of isolate exactly where that spider cube is. I'm still going up. I'm into the 400s, 
Everything's very gray here. I'm guessing we're in the gray part of the uh, spider cube. You're, we're looking at the kind of the left hand side of both the R, G, and B. And as we keep coming up, up around 500, all of a sudden we start getting a really high trace in here. The trace starts to go up in the air quite a bit. I'm just kind of dialing through this entire number. There it is. There's a big spike that goes all the way up to 700 millivolts, or it would be about 100 IRE. If you look at the uh, spider cube, there's a little um, specular highlight. They've got at the very top of the cube, they've got a little silver ball. And that picks up the specular highlights of the bright lights. And you can see how bright that is. So I am guessing that right there at line uh, 603, that's that specular highlight. And if you even move the line select just a couple of notches either way, that specular highlight goes away very quickly. So that's telling you it's a very small area. You know, so I think we've narrowed in on that specular highlight. And you can see, um, you know, maybe the, the green channel is a little lower and the blue channel is a little higher. So this is kind of a, a greeny kind of look. It's a little hard to tell. The thing is, right, Bob, when you're looking at a specular highlight, you don't want to color correct on a specular highlight. No, not at all, because you want the highlights just, just to blow. You want to find your white chip. And you wanna, reference the white chip. You find, want to find a real white white chip. So um, we've kind of dialed in that spider cube here. If you look uh, at the tech scope, and you can see that your levels are pretty well balanced. If you if you figure that this is probably the white of the spider cube, our, our levels are fairly well balanced there. Let's take a look at the uh, the previous balance. That's and, where it was, Steve, before we. Uh, fixed it or balanced Before it. we fixed it. And you can see the red is fairly high, green is a little lower, and blue is even lower yet. And so if you wanted to, you could go into this line select, you'd be able to find a specific portion of, a, of an image, for example, that spider cube. And you can even use, for example, the mag. Uh, this is a little harder to see what you're doing, and I'm not sure I'll be able to find this quickly. But if you hit mag now, what you'll get is You'll, you'll be able to go across the image horizontally and find specific portions. You could find an exact spot on an image that's between scopes right there. You could find, oh, there's, for example, maybe right there, that's my white section of the uh, spider cube. So I'm gonna click on um, mag again. You can also, just to show you, you hold down mag a little bit and you're able to choose 10x, 20x, so you can change the magnification if you want to. You can totally get rid of it by hitting mag again. And we're still in line select. If we want to see back to our normal version again of the waveform monitor, we hit line select and we're back into the regular scopes. So that's uh, just two really interesting things to be able to do on this scope. I want to show you a couple of the specialized displays. This is going to be a little bit of a, a brush up of some of the things that we learned in the basic training in Apple Color on the tech scopes. But I want to show you how to do presets and I want to show you a couple of very cool um, scopes including one called the LQV which you probably haven't seen before. I'm going to hit the preset button and as soon as I hit the preset button you see at the bottom of the display a uh, series of words, gamut, quick view, two up, gamut LQV, four vectors, RGB plus LQV, waves, and general. Now, the, these buttons underneath of them, they read the same thing at all times, waveform, vector, and so on. But now these buttons refer to the little, uh, they're now basically software buttons that refer to the information that's on the screen. So if I hit this waveform button, this is going to call up my preset, which is called gamut and I type that name in there. You can name them whatever you want. Um, it's pretty easy to do. You can, you can name things with an external computer. You can just do it very quickly from the front of the display itself. This is one of my displays that's all gamut displays. And some of these you may not recognize, so I'm just gonna kind of fill you in on some of these. Obviously, we've got a vector scope in the top corner. You can see there's a little blue outline around the top right corner display. I want to uh, select the top left corner display. So I'm going to press the one button under this display select section on the front of the, the uh, tech scope. Hit one and now that's selected. And if I hit full, now we go to uh, the full frame mode of that scope. Hitting the full button again calls you back out to the four up display. And I have a diamond display here. The diamond is very simple to read actually it looks a little complex but the very center where these all these images these four lines of the two diamonds cross that is black 
um, directly above black on the top diamond, white is up here, and directly below black on the bottom diamond, that's white. So black's in the middle, and white is at the top and the bottom. On the top diamond, green is to the left side, and blue is to the right, and on the bottom diamond, green is to the left, and red is to the right. So um, green is on both diamonds, and then blue and red are also on there, and it's a way that you can actually, one, it shows you whether you're out of gamut, and two, it also helps you white balance, because a white balanced image is gonna show up right in the middle of the, of the, the double diamonds, which is pretty much where ours is. There's a little bit of red off to the side in the bottom diamond. You know, that's probably Bob's skin tones. And uh, so we're looking at a pretty well balanced image here. The display in the bottom corner, the bottom left corner, is the spearhead display. And the spearhead is display is basically the diamond display folded in half vertically. So you fold those diamonds to turn into two triangles, and then you fold the two triangles to turn into one triangle, and that's basically what this display. Luminance goes up the far left side. So basically, if you have a black and white image, it would be a line going from the bottom to the top. Saturation, complete saturation, is along the top of this image, and what they call value, which is kind of a combination of the two, runs up the middle. So once again, we can see that we're dealing with a pretty well-balanced image and everything's legal. We also know it's legal because there's no uh, error message in the bottom corner of the screen. And then this is uh, the far uh, left corner at the bottom is called the arrowhead display. And this is really for NTSC composite and it's showing you whether all of, you know, you can make this beautiful image that might be okay in RGB color space, but is it okay in composite color space, composite NTSC? This display is gonna tell you that. Um, whether you're inside gamut. Let's take a look at a couple of the other presets. Uh, quick view. This is a really good uh, view for a colorist, I think. Um, is there anything in here that you would like to see, Bob, as a colorist? You've got your RGB parade in the top left corner. You've got a vector scope. You've got a composite uh, waveform monitor down at the bottom showing you SDI composite video. And then you've got a Luma-only low-pass uh, waveform monitor in the bottom right corner. That's pretty nice, Steve. Unless there's some other new fancy type of preset you can put in there or another type of display, I think that would work for me. Is All there right. anything else? Well, I, I call this one the quick view because it's quick, but I've got a couple of uh, little tricks up my sleeve and you will like this, I think. Matter of fact, I know you will because we already talked about it. <laughs> Here's a two-up display. This two-up display basically is the waveform in 2X on the top and bottom. So two waveforms turn into one, and the vector scope, same thing. So basically, this is giving you a full RGB waveform on one side of the screen and a full vector scope on the other side of the screen. Now, you're that's missing pretty some, slick. You're missing some of the outside parts of the vector scope, but you know, for colorists, you know, a lot of time, most of what you need is in the middle. Most of the time, my vector scope's blown up all the way anyway. Yep, there you go. So now I'm going to show you a couple other presets. Once again, you just hit the preset button. Two-up display is what I showed you last. I want to show you something very cool, and this is, um, I'm going to press four vectors. And you're like, four vector scopes? Why would I need four vector scopes? Well, this is something that's completely unique to Tektronix. And it's something that they brought to me almost a year ago, and I was just blown away by the, the ability uh, for this to help a colorist. In the top corner where I've got selected, that's your standard vector scope. This, this image is a little hard to tell uh, what we're looking at because all the images seem to be kind of the same, but you can see that there's a difference in each vector scope. That's not a scale difference. The top right-hand corner is a straight vector scope. The entire image is going into that vector scope and you're seeing the whole thing. But the top left, what this is, it's Tektronix specific technology called Luma Qualified Vector. And you can choose whatever part of the luminance signal that you want to. It can be a very fine amount or it can be a wider amount. We have chosen to look at the vector scope where all you see is the highlights uh, between the highest millivolts, which is 766, and about 400. So we're looking at about the top 25%, which is what we, you know, we basically consider uh, to be gain or highlight. That is all that scope is showing you. So for example, if you started to mess with the highlight uh, color wheel, you would see just, you know, they're all moving a little bit because, you know, they're all slightly interactive but basically you're adjusting that one. Let's show, maybe from the highlight, uh, the highlight wheel. Yep. 
So that's pretty cool. Steve, it looks like there's more in the gamma, which is that skin tone you were talking about. It's so, and what I'm looking at here, where you're pointing out in the shadows and the whites, is because yep. it's so low or tight? Is that because we have it so balanced? Yeah, we do have it pretty well balanced, and so you're going to see that movement. But it's pretty cool to be able to go into a specific one of your color wheels, for example, the highlight color wheel, and that vector scope, the Luma Qualified Vector Scope, is going to correspond to that specific wheel, which is very unusual because a straight vector scope, it corresponds to all three wheels. So having this LQV, each, each one of these LQVs corresponds to one of the specific color wheels in Colors UI. The bottom left-hand one I've got set between 400 and 100, so that's pretty much the middle 50% of luminance. And then the far right bottom one down here, this says it's between 100 and negative whatever, so basically it's giving us from 100 millivolts down through um, below zero. So you've got highlights, midtones, and shadows. So it's a vector scope that actually shows you either the entire image, which is up in the top right-hand corner, or it's showing you highlights, midtones, and shadows in the other three quadrants. So that's uh, that's called the LQV and it's something nobody else really has. And I know you and I were both pretty excited about that development. I've included that LQV look with a couple other of these presets. I've got one called Gamut LQV. That's identical to the one I just showed you, only instead of a vector scope in the top right-hand corner, it's got the uh, spearhead display. So it gives you a gamut display on top of everything else. Hit the preset button again, and I've got one called RGB plus LQV. And this, I think this might become my favorite color correction preset. I think so. I like it. It's got the RGB waveform up in the top uh, right-hand corner, and then, as I already explained, highlights, midtones, and shadows. Highlights are in the top left. Midtones are in the bottom left and shadows are in the right. Very cool preset. And then we've got waves. Uh, and these are just instantly, you can call them up instantly. It's very simple to see. Um, this one, the image we've got, doesn't have a lot of highlights. Um, but basically what this is, we've got an RGB parade waveform up here. We've got a YRGB waveform in the bottom. And what we've got in these two, there's really nothing showing up in this. Oh, there, Bob's helping me out. Thanks, Bob. There, there you, you go. go. There you go. Look at that. Thank you. You've got two different waveform, RGB waveforms. Both of them are blown up to 5.0 gain. Uh, and so what we're looking at is just the very top of one waveform, the same waveform actually, the very top of the waveform and the very bottom. So if you're trying to balance your blacks and you're trying to see the, you know, the little teeny detail that's way down there, you don't have to do it on some little teeny scope. You can really blow it up and see the very, very fine detail that you need to see to make these fine corrections. And these zooms, for example, I call them zooms, but they're really gain. If you want to change this gain on one of these um, scopes, it's pretty simple to do. You hit, for example, let's say I want to change the gain on the, uh, the bottom waveform. I'm just going to push the four button on the front of the scope that highlights it in this blue color. And then I'm just going to choose gain. Hold down the gain button and this little menu pops up and I'm gonna use these arrows at the top to go down and then over to the right and I can choose 5X, 2X, 1X, 10X. If I wanna really see uh, you know, a huge display, I can go to 10X and hit select and clear gain. Now I've got, if you can see down there in the very small print at the bottom in yellow, it says V-Gain X10. Uh, now we can't see anything. Well, you use your vertical dial here to be able to see where you where your your uh, trace is there, so that's the very bottom of this image right there. So now we've zoomed in 10x on that, and that's pretty pretty much how these work. You can create your own presets this way. It's very simple to do. You know, you pick a quadrant, and let's say uh, I'll show you on this one. I'm going to hit preset, and here's our general setting. So I'm going to just hit general. Here's our general setting. So we've got. Um, an RGB, we've got a composite waveform, a vector scope, and a, an actual image. Down here, instead of having this SDI composite, let's change this one. Well, you just use these arrows to choose the one you want. I want this bottom corner, and now I'm going to hold down. Let's, what do you want to put in here? Do we want to put uh, maybe a different type of waveform? If you want a different type of waveform, you hold down. If you wanted a vector scope down there, you'd press the vector scope button, and now a vector scope is down here. If you wanted a waveform, you press the waveform button, 
And if you want to change the display of this waveform, uh, which one, which type of waveform it is, you just hold this waveform button down for a second until you get this dialog box. Let's say we want a parade in there. You use these arrows up here to go over and choose parade. Now I'm going to go down and we'll uh, say flat. Yeah, we want a flat uh, display, Luma, Chroma. But instead of SDI, let's go, let's display um, YRGB up here instead of just RGB. Great, we're done. Select. And now we've got RGB in the top corner and YRGB in the bottom corner. The display is a little bit off. Let's move the horizontal display over here like this. Get them all on there. That looks good. And if we want to save this as uh, this preset, let's say we didn't like that one, we want to change this. You press the preset button. Now you've got general. That's the, what this one is. This was our general setting. I'm going to hold that button down until it says, do you want to save over this? And it's already on continue. It could be on cancel. I'm just going to hit the select button up at the top to save that. And it says preset eight is saved. So you can make your own presets to, for whatever your uses and needs are. Or one of the very cool things is Bob and I have saved our favorite presets, the ones that I just walked through with you. We've saved those on the project file for this training. So definitely check those out. If you've got a tech scope where you can load those settings, then you can use our settings and adjust them however you want. So really to get completely in depth on this scope, we could probably do four hours of training on this easily, um, but hopefully we've hit a bunch of the highlights and shown the value of this great tech scope.